more, learn from the past, set vivid detail goals for the future, and live in the only moment of time over which you have any control, which is now. Thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the roll call for today? Sixteen present. Next, I'd like to ask you to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before us right now. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the minutes? 16 ayes. Do we have any resignations? I'll next, I'll turn it over to the city attorney for resignations. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the mayor received a uh, email from Vicki Hall advising that she needs to resign from the Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force as, <clears throat> as the environmental organization member as she's uh, moving out of state. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 16 ayes. Motion passes. Going on to council appointments. Confirmation of one. The confirmation of council appointments. Uh, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Aurora Bonilla to be considered for appointment to the Senior Activity Center Commission to fill the unexpired term of Sheriff Powell Vang, whose term expires 4 28 2014. Signed by the Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion to confirm the council appointments. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 16 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to the public forum. City Clerk. Thank you. Um, first this evening, we have Jason Peters. Jason, are you here? Could you come on up to the microphone, please? Okay. Is that right? yeah, I, I was going to tell you that, yes. All right. <laughs> I need your home address, Jason. Here, it's uh, 1225 Kaufman Avenue. OK. You will have five minutes. All right. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Jason Peters. It's kind of hard for me to be up here because growing up, my father gave me some good advice. He said, Jason, show me, don't tell me. A lot of times people can tell you a lot of things, but they won't really do them. With this Army Foundation, the members we have on our board, I can tell you, I associate myself with people who do things that they say. I'd like to use a little analogy. I'm sure everybody in here is around my age, so we've all seen the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And I'm not talking about the Johnny Depp version, I'm talking the original, Gene Wilder. And Mr. Mayor and council members, to me, you're the Willy Wonkas. And the Army Foundation, we're your workers, we're your Oompa Loompas. But seriously, there's 50,000 citizens of Sheboygan who deserve a golden ticket to go into that chocolate factory, otherwise known as the Sheboygan Armory. And it's up to you who have the key to open it up. You know, also growing up, my mother, she told me, when you come to a tough decision in life, use the what if method. So council members, I ask you this, what if you sell the armory for let's say half a million dollars? 10 to 20 years from now, when people are driving through, are they gonna remember a dime of where that money is? What if you turn it into a bolt storage or a place where special people can park their Corvettes in the wintertime? What 10, 20 years from now, what are they going to say? Daddy, what's that place? Oh, that's a great bolt storage. But what if 
You take a chance on us, and we fail. There's no blood on your hands. There's no guilt in your hearts. We have to live with it. We killed the armory. But when we succeed, and notice I said when we succeed, you take all the credit. That's politics 101. Put yourself in a no-lose situation. In closing, I'm going to tell you what I learned in life. I'm the kind of person, you want to throw me to the wolves? I'll come back leading the pack. And what I mean by that is, Mr. Mayor, I, I read the paper. I've lived in Sheboygan County all my life. I've lived in the city since 1999. I've heard on the radio you stating you want to, you're going to meet with us. It's been over a month. The only time I ever met you is when I married my beautiful wife and I rented a tuxedo from you. So if you think I'm a little upset, I am. Because here's another reason. I saw the spaceport get a dollar a year lease for seven years and the city taxpayers paid for the heating? We're not asking for that. I see what the quarry did. A Madison firm based dollar a year lease, all profits go to them. We're not asking for that. We are citizens of Sheboygan, the ones that you're supposed to represent. We're asking for a dollar a year lease and we'll pay all the costs. I have so many people lined up to want to help us, pay for it, and I can't do anything because I can't get access. If it was up to me, I wouldn't wait till October. I would say, oh, Army Foundation, it's yours right now. Here's the keys. So it's common sense, common counsel. You know, there's one or two that I know are against us. And calling us names behind our back or whatever, that's fine. That's fine. But I'm hoping the rest of you will follow the people that voted for you, and I saw the polls in the press. It was double what they have for us. So please just think about it and vote for your people you represent. Give us this chance and open it up so people can have their golden ticket. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Next on the list is Joanne Scribner. Joanne, can I have your home address, please? Three Seneca Trail. Okay, and you have five minutes. I couldn't say it any better than Jason just did. So I'll just add some of my own personal comments, um, having been born somewhere around 1949, so that makes me kind of old school. Proud of it, just love that. But the thing is about the Sheboygan Armory, I was born in Sheboygan County, so all the events that I remember, the Harlem Globetrotters, my parents uh, took me and my brother to the Armory when we were kids, high school, elementary, to the Army concerts, Navy concerts. Not that long ago, a couple years ago, with the UW Fifth Quarter Marching Band was here at the Armory. Festival of Trees, quite recently. It's where the polar bears hang out when they need to warm up. So many events at the Armory. We are Sheboygan citizens. How many of you 16 aldermen, aldermen here are from Sheboygan County? Glad that you're here if you're not. But we, the Sheboygan County residents who have been here all our lives, have a lot of really good memories at the Sheboygan Armory. The North-South basketball games, teen dances. Um, this morning, I printed 45 pages that Bill Wangaman, former alderman, Sheboygan County historian, wrote up all the different stats from the beginning, how the Army was actually found. In 1940, May 13th, the Sheboygan Common Council resolution submitted for construction of the Armory. 1940, uh, March 19th, they approved plans to build the Armory. Army was dedicated 4th of July, 1942. Uh, there, the list goes on and on of all the bands, stars, and politicians that were at the Sheboygan Armory. I was there in the 60s when Vice President, I think he was Vice President at the time or he was running, Nixon was here, Richard Nixon. Bill Steiger of Oshkosh, GOP, he's gone now, but he was politician along with, and, and Nixon was here. Other politicians, Humphrey was here, Hubert Humphrey, Democrat. 
um, nonpartisan kind of building, you know. Um, a dollar a year. That's a no-brainer. There are just so many memories. Buccaneers. You, you probably saw a classic reunion last year, Fourth of July parade. <coughs> Sharp, precise. Those guns and flags, they twirl really well. Snap, precision. That's how the Buccaneers were. Remember them. They were here. They were like the top drill team, as far as my, my opinion. The accents were also good. Precision, snap, guns twirling around in the air, flags twirling across the room. Sharp, at the armory. Harlem Globetrotters, as I said, powerlifting, Lakeland College, Muskie basketball games. I went to Lakeland College. I went to the Muskie games before I was at Lakeland College. Festival trees, as I mentioned. So, um, my plea should bring common counsel. And I did talk to, I called each one of you, all 16 of you, and I really am strong about one issue. I call all of you, and not just Don and Susie. <laughs> and I did call Don and Susie first, because I always call my reps first. But I left messages with you guys, and some of you responded back with my phone, with phone calls. And it seemed like most of you that called back were like on board with saving the armory for a multi-use building for activities like it was in the past. I talked to Mayor Mike, too, um, about the same thing. I think Mayor Mike's on board, too, with keeping the armory as a, a multi-event building, like it always was. A dollar a year, how can you go wrong? A Save the Armory, the Armory Foundation Committee that's ready to take on the heating expenses and things like that. No brainer. Boat storage place? More condos? No. Armory, festival trees, events, basketball games. That's all I can say. I, I just really hope that the Common Council of Sheboygan will decide to keep the Sheboygan Armory as the Sheboygan Armory a place for events. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, next would be Paul Gruber. Paul, if you could come up, please. And Paul, can I have your home address? Five, <clears throat> 508 Volrath Boulevard. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Well, I'm not going to take it all. Uh, I've lived here for about 45 years. My wife and I moved up here, uh, raised three children. We went to a lot of events at the Armory. It was as very well enumerated. There are lots of neat things that went on at the Armory. Uh, the reason we moved up here was because there are so many wonderful people, lots of great organizations, uh, a lot of unique things in the city of Sheboygan, the county of Sheboygan. But looking at it unemotionally, I really feel looking at it, is there a reason for keeping that building just because we've had all those good times in it? I can enumerate a lot of other buildings in the city here also that I've had a lot of good times in. And if there isn't a real worthwhile cause, I don't know why we'd really need to keep them. It's not unique architecturally at all. Uh, there have been other buildings, public library, uh, the Bank of Sheboygan, some of those that were more architecturally uh, unique. So I just think that that site has better potential than it does with that existing facility there, and with ultimately probably what it would cost structurally to take care of it. So I really believe that nowadays with the, there's so much demand for our, not only tax dollars, but for our donations to many different organizations <coughs> that there's really uh, much better potential use for those dollars elsewhere rather than in that building. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, next would be Mike Brunette. Mike, if you could come forward, please. And Mike, can I have your home address? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Cool. Um, <laughs> this was going to be a TV typey thingy, but bandwidth for your guest thing doesn't support it, so get your close on glasses together. I'm going to have to wing it, but basically, if you don't know by now, it's, it's on the armory. <clears throat> what you're hearing right now is question mark and the Mysterians. 
one of the many, 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 many bands that played at the Armory on a monthly basis through the Cadet Youth Organization. And it's about history, huh? It's about history. 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 The Prangy Fire. History. Done. History. Can't destroy those garden toys. Oh, but buildings they go. And it's like, this, I'm not really sure, but I think it's from the old leather place fire. I'm not really, I can't get a good tag on it. But that's one of our other big parts of history in Sheboygan. And it's like, but history moves on, moves out, like the interurban rail car. And it's like, what I'm interested in is, well, we don't need no stinking history. I don't even see, see an armory. I see an auditorium. It's never going to be used as an armory again. That's just what it's called. But, but development, we got plenty. Our Myra Corporation, a buck. What happens for a buck? Huh, boat storage. Cookley. People. It's all about the people. It's not about us. It's about our kids, your kids, your grandchildren. It's not about us. People. Why are they important? Well, let's see. Thomas Industries says people are the heart of a company is it's people. It's people. Boom, they're gone. And it's like, let's move on. Oh, the future. I love the future. That's where I'm going. What do we got? Ah, this is an architect's rendering from a little place that's called, heck, the Municipal Auditorium and Armory. Boom. It's fading. Fading quick. Not because there's anything wrong with it. Because people see it as the only spot in Sheboygan for development. And I'll argue at this point, I'll pause a second, but as far as that architectural significance, that place kicks butt completely on anything in town. That roof, that structure up above there, there's not one point on those beams that supports over 200 pounds. And it's like, here's the future. Spaceport, we're rocking stuff up. Spaceport, ooh, what could go wrong? And it's like... How about a two-seated Pope plane? Vertical takeoff and landing. Stick some money into that. Oh, not looking good. Not looking good. What about the now? Now. We have this building now. We have this building now. And it's like, right now, we know that it's going to cost 9650 according to a meeting that was just held recently, just to, just to drain the pipes on it. I mean, we got the numbers, it's all up on our site, um, telling people about the numbers, the actual numbers for heat, this, that, history, future, you name it. You don't have to remember what our site is. Type in Sheboygan, you know how to spell that. Type in Armory, you know how to spell that. Click on what it's ever out there, you're coming to our site, one way or another. You're going to go on Wikipedia, you're going to learn a little. You're going to go to the Armory Foundation, you're going to learn a little. Click around, look. It's not about today, it's about the future. And it's like, the last thing we need is to tear down that building and throw up the Lottie Cooper over there. And that's all I got. Thank you, Michael. And lastly, we have um, Bob Cheesebro. <clears throat> Bob, can I get your home address, please? 216 Euclid. And you'll have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I'm a resident of Sheboygan, a lifelong resident. I was born in 1937, and I graduated from North High School in 1955, and as it happened, it rained that year, and the ceremony was held in the armory. I also attended college and majored in history, for the record, so I'm not impervious to the the past and respecting the past and what we can learn from it. I also attended the University of Michigan where I got my uh, master's degree in business administration. I've attended in my past games of the Sheboygan Redskins. I've attended, I graduated from the, in the armory. I went to a concert that was put on by Bobby Vinton and I attended a number of North High South High basketball games in the Sheboygan Armory. All these events in my past 
are very memorable to me, but I remember the events, I don't remember the place. And quite honestly, in my view, the Sheboygan Armory is not an architectural uh, wonder that is worth preserving. It's an unoccupied building right now, and it's not an attractive building on our landscape, and it's costing, it has cost the city money to maintain that building. Next of all, I just want to tell you that in my history as a citizen of Sheboygan, I have worked on many fundraising events. And most recently, I have worked to raise money for the construction of the addition to the Salvation Army. I've worked to raise money for the refurbishing of the Sheboygan YMCA. I'm presently working to raise money for Elizabeth Ann Seton to renovate that building. And I've worked on the Sheboygan United Way. There are, I can tell you, there are many, many organizations looking for money and that money is from private organizations is not easy to come by. There's a lot of donor fatigue in our community with all the good causes that exist and for people that want to raise money for ongoing programs or for new initiatives. And for that reason, I am, as a citizen, opposed to keeping the Sheboygan Armory, and I would advocate that it be demolished. Uh, no, no disrespect for the people who are in the Armory Foundation, but I would question whether they have the ability and the wherewithal to go out on an ongoing basis and maintain that building in the condition it's in. And uh, nor do I think that the city of Sheboygan, the county of Sheboygan, the state of Wisconsin, or the federal government should donate any money or spend any money for the preservation of that structure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Next is Mayor's announcements. We just heard from several citizens speaking about the armory in our public forum. And last week, the Common Council approved a request for proposals which is intended to make this a very fair process and how we can best plan for the future of the armory and the armory site. The uh, proposals are due by October 31st, and our purchasing agent can be contacted for an RFP. Thus far, 58 RFPs have been mailed out to those who have requested a copy and has been placed in the Sheboy ad will be placed soon in the Sheboygan Press, which will run several times. And in addition, they've worked with the SCEDC to send out an email to contacts they have who are interested in developing projects uh, in cities like Sheboygan. If anybody would like a copy, they can call the purchasing department at 459-3469 to request an RFP. And just to uh, comment on the, uh, the meeting, um, not so soon after the, uh, this issue was brought up by the Armory Foundation at this council meeting, the uh, Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee made a recommendation to this council to take a different direction rather than entertaining these uh, in an individual basis. They wanted to have all the RFPs come in so they could be uh, equally uh, given consideration. So I'm willing to meet with you gentlemen anytime, but the council has kind of tied my hands as far as a direction and this is the way we're gonna be going and all of these will be evaluated after they're submitted on October 31st. At the last Common Council, there were also some questions about the HVA systems at the Armory, the possible damage if they were taken offline. Uh, if there's no objection, I'd like to have David Beeble come and give us an update on that. David, would you please step forward? Thank you, Mayor. I think w at the last meeting, there was a lot of concern about you know, if we shut that building down, damage to that building, and, and we reiterated to council that evening that that was not our intent, is that we want to preserve that building and keep it in its current condition if all possible. We went out and got some, some quotes, and we, we employed a you know, professional mechanical engineering firm to look at that, 
after evaluating the costs, we think it's prudent to just keep the heating and ventilating systems operating through this interim phase while you're reviewing these proposals to keep the building's integrity in shape. And um, that's what we're going to be doing, and we'll be continuing our normal maintenance as we have over the years. Thank you very much, David. Um, next, we'd like to talk about the spring primary election. This will be held on Tuesday, February 18th, and it's only for three wards in the city of Sheboygan. The city clerk has decided to have wards 2, 3, and 12 at one polling location, which will be at the First Congregational Church at 310 Bluff Avenue. This is the only uh, for the primary. The polls will open up at 7 and close at 8, and the ballot contains only one office for a county board supervisor for District 2. Next, I'd like to ask Andy Resch and Brian Willardson to come to the podium. At a recent Wastewater Operators Association annual conference, two of the staff of the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Plant were recognized with awards. The Wisconsin Operators Association is comprised of over 2,000 wastewater treatment plant professionals serving municipalities and industries throughout the state. The city of Sheboygan's wastewater treatment plant was hit hard over the last few years with losing nearly half of its staff. Many, over the, many of those people who left had over 20 years of experience. This especially uh, hit our, our operator staff losing 80% of our experienced operators. The two new members of the Sheboygan operations staff are Brian Willardson and Andy Rush. Both of these fellows applied for and transferred from the DPW staff to wastewater treatment plant to begin a new career as wastewater treatment operators. Neither of them had any past experience in the environmental fields and thus took on this new challenge with nervous excitement. Tom Tuco, who is the laboratory technician for the wastewater treatment plant for 27 years, and a plant operator for the five years before that had the opportunity to listen, to work, and to help educate both Brian and Andy in their new field. While working in the lab, he was able to watch them go from nervous newcomers to coming full-time plant operators, running the full daily operation and functions of the plant. Both Brian and Andy learned not only the basic operations, but also voluntarily immersed themselves into more detailed aspects of the operation. Brian and Andy both with a good foundation and understanding, we're running general plant processes, including uh, wasting, return rate changes, digester control, disinfection, and many internal laboratory tests, including ammonia test, chloride residual, orthophosphorus, pH, and microbiology identification. They not only helped each other learn about their new field, but also to use their knowledge to help other employees who had not much more experience than they had. As employees at the Sheboygan Municipal Building before coming to the wastewater treatment plant, Andy and Brian often requested and joined working together as a team. Brian and Andy both started at about the same time at wastewater and continued their teamwork, helping each other to understand and learn the aspects of this new field. Because of this, they were nominated to the Wisconsin Wastewater uh, Operators Association Board, and their supervisor requested uh, for a special variance from the norm in the presentation of this award to only one person, but rather, if chosen for the newcomer of the year, that both Brian and Andy receive the award together because of their accomplishments as a team and for bringing their strong attitude of teamwork to the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Facility. So I get to uh, represent these awards to Brian and Andy. Guys, thank you very much for all your work. Let's give them a hand. At this conference, former wastewater treatment manager Dale Dorr was also recognized with the George Bruner Award for outstanding contributions to wastewater technology in the state of Wisconsin, and the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant was featured on the cover of the December issue of the uh, Clarifier, the state magazine, uh, and a full write-up is inside of their net zero energy achievement. Let's give Sharon Tietzen and all of her stance, st staff at Wastewater Treatment a hand for the great work that they do. Okay, next we'll proceed to the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That will include items 2.1 through 2.18. Any discussion on any of those items? See none. Will the clerk please call the roll on the consent agenda? 16 ayes. Next, we'll proceed to reports of officers. Item 3.1 through 3.3 will lie over. Items 3.4 through 3.12 will be referred to various committees. And then proceeding to resolutions. Resolution 4.1 will lie over. Resolution 4.2 will be referred to salary and grievances. And resolution 4.3 will be referred to public works. Under reports of committees, 5.1 is an RC by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations, um, establishing an appropriation for industrial parkland improvements. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The mo resolution is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on 5.1. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 5.2 is an RC by finance recommending referring a document submitting a communication from Meals on Wheels asking to purchase a piece of land immediately north of the property that they purchased last year that will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Uh, under matters laid over, 6.1 is GO number 49 of 1314 by Alderman Vanderweel and Van Akron, amending the general ordinance 17-13-14, <coughs> granting Internet <coughs> Systems, Inc. the privilege of encroaching on the portions of city right-of-way for installing fiber optic cable uh, in order to correct the descript description. Alderman Vanderweel. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 16 ayes. Motion passes. Next, I'll turn it over to the city attorney for other matters. 7.1 is an RO submitting a communication from the state of Wisconsin Department of Corrections on behalf of Brian Kufus, requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to be placed in a TLP located at 1123-1125 North 14th Street or 930A Michigan Avenue based on availability. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 7.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That will be referred to lawn licensing. 7.3 is a, a communication from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections requesting a waiver for the sex offender residency restrictions on behalf of state inmate Martonis Wallace in order to be placed in a TLP at 930A Michigan or 1123-1125 North 14th Street depending on availability. That will also be referred to public protection and safety. Next is a closed session, Alderman Van, uh, Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section, section 19.851E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating, deliberating the purchase of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. I'm going into closed session. Clerk, please call the roll. 16 ayes. We'll take a five-minute recess and then reconvene in closed session. <laughs> 